Hello everyone, I am D Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of Phenomeno. Ah, finally. So, once again, I'm in a dark room to play this game. But, I found out something interesting. So, I was talking about how this game had three cases or three chapters, right? Yeah, so apparently this game actually does have the first two chapters. So this is the intro, this is the first chapter, flow, and this is the second chapter, fall, or the second case. So there's three cases in total, and the thing is the third case or the third chapter is unpublished. So yeah, it's not in this game for some reason. You can, I think you can read it up online or something if you want to, but yeah. The three case is this game only covers the first two case. And in the last episode, we just finished with the first chapter or the first case. So, so, I guess we begin the second case. Four. This seems like a flashback. Yeah. The new the new apartment was fantastic. Really. The pretty clean flooring, the new wallpaper, the sterilized unit bath. It wasn't right comparing it to that house where the previous inhabitants' remnants drifted everywhere, but I definitely learned that it wasn't right to skimp on housing expenses. This was even further from the university, but how serious were nearby? I could walk to a convenience store and there were plenty of street lights. This apartment which was brightly lit at, even at night was introduced to me by Karasu. Hmm. From what I heard, one of Karasu's acquaintances was the landlord for this apartment and she was renting a room here too. It annoyed me a bit that the room was simply a warehouse, a place to put paranormal cursing equipment apparently for her but I couldn't complain. Rent rocketed to 50,000 yen, that's about what, $500? But it was 6 tatami 1k with a loft and a unit bath, so it was extremely cheap for the area. Hmm, okay. It had been one week since I looked at, the, at that paranormal house with Yoshi. Oh, it had been one week since... Alright, what happened to the countdown then? Right after noon, okay, so we're still the same guy, and it's been one week since that the last chapter. And the countdown stopped after 3? Right afternoon on a Sunday on a rare day with no part-time work and no lectures, I opened the window and took in the comfortable breeze as I sprawled out in the empty room. The previous week had passed by quickly. First I cried to my big sister and borrowed some money and immediately moved here. I didn't want to enter that house ever again and it was expensive having to hire people but it was worth it. Furthermore, this apartment's walls were so thin that you would almost instinctively want to pick up your neighbor's ringing phones, which made it feel like you were among living people, and you could greet people in the hallways. And if you opened the windows, you could hear the lackadaisical voice of the bamboo pool merchants. Alright, so we actually did move out. Wow, you did the smart thing. Normally, that this protect be like, but I can't move out, or... I don't want to move out or something like they don't move out and then it's too late by that like this guy actually did the smart thing he moved out like I was like all right get out pack your things move out of that nope just get out and he did that'd be kind of a boring horror story right yeah all right I moved out and yeah that's it end of story uh we're gonna have to go back to that house or the whatever that was haunting us in that house will follow us isn't it I don't know Basically, this place was overflowing with life. For me, that was extremely important as I had been drained of mental energy to the extremes. I required the comfort of living amidst people. What about Yoshi though? I never met Yoshi again. Alright, now I explain. That night, I gave her a lift to the family restaurant and parted ways. Everything about her was a mystery other than the fact that she was a high school student and that her real name was Mitsurugi Yoshi. I spoke with her a bit as I skipped to this train station. 
But I never found out what was going on with the house. Huh. She didn't try to explain and I was in uh, any hurry to ask. However, I had a strange conviction that something bad was there. Every night I heard something eerie and I even ate a countdown, but mostly I believe it's it because of Yoshi's one phrase, this place is real. That this was not a place I could deal with. I immediately thought that. If you think about it that way, she was why I was able to make the decision to place myself in such a ple peaceful place, but it is true what they say, that when the blade is no longer to your throat, you regain your curiosity. What kind of saying is that? Alright. Now that it was all in the past, I was truthfully somewhat curious. Oh no, I don't go back to the house. What did she notice? Well, she did mention there's an empty space in underneath the stairs. What was the countdown? What is Yoshi anyways? It was hard to explain, but she seemed different from just an occult maniac. It wasn't like she was getting a thrill out of coming close to danger, but rather, she seemed to have no instinct telling her to avoid dangerous areas. In other words, it was hard to explain her as anything but someone wanting to die, or someone already dead. Like, didn't you know, Yoshi claim to be a ghost or something in the forum? And if she's telling the truth, like her name, then yeah, she's just a ghost. Whenever she said something, I felt like the word I believe, the world I believe and lived in was about to crumble apart. Sometimes I would take a peek at Ikai Gabushi, but Yoshi never appeared in the thread. And of course, no one reacted to the thread I started, and it had been buried deep to the point where I didn't want to revive it. Krishna descended upon various threads, but he never touched on my, on my or Yoshi's case. That was real, I wanted to write but I had no means of proving myself and I myself felt fuzzy about it so I kept myself to an ordinary life. In the daily life continued. An increased living expense and an abundance of light and heat. My scholarship was insufficient so I began working part time at an Italian restaurant near the train station. I wanted to pay back the moving funds that I brought for my big sis, so I started working whenever I had no lectures. My city survival began as I worked myself to exhaustion and flung a tight smile everywhere. Alright, a week flew by and it was that sort of day. But something happened, something has to happen, it can't end like this. I mean that's why that's the whole point, this a new chapter. My first university lecture in a while had just ended and I was stuffing and my textbooks into my bag, when I realized a girl I recognized was staring at me. It's not Yoshi. Okay, it's not. She was short, yet her breasts were big enough to notice through her clothing. This gay man their breasts, they... Uh, her hair was... but... Um, yeah, they weren't joking, man. Look at the size of them. Her hair was cut straight like a Yashiki Warashi, and her face resembled that of a young middle schooler, matching her red frame glasses. Can I see her face? Nope. Alright. Who's that? I stared right back at her and she cleared her throat. Once and then came over. Um. Okay. She started taking something out of her pocket and then put it back. I saw that it was some sort of paper. Is that a love confession? She walked to me standing straight and still and in the end, never took out that piece of paper. She had a bit of a vexed expression as she glared at me, although her babyish fish face made it lose its bite. And then clicked her tongue and then turned away. Nope, she seems angry. Uh, hey, hey. I couldn't stop myself from calling out to her. What do you want? Speak up. This straight head girl turned back around and said, Baka. Wow. <laughs> Baka? Okay, I, I, won't, I won't use. Japanese one by Weibo. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you. Idiot. Despite being mild mannered, I wasn't one to stand being insulted by a girl I never met before. Why are you being so rude? What's your name? What grade are you? Oh, you don't, you don't just ask all the questions. I asked, but she simply snapped back. Shut up. It's your fault to begin with. All right. 
And then she pointed her small index finger at me. It's because you're scum like you that these things keep happening like this. Then your place, fool. F fool? You... Alright. After that, she rapidly asked me. Do your shoulders ache? Do your ears ring? Are you able to sleep at night? Was she some sort of doctor's apprentice? Did this university even have a medical college? While I was bewildered, the girl finally pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. She stuck it under my nose. I had no time to take it, as she simply ran off like a rabbit. And by the time I picked up, picked it up, she had already left the classroom. Great. The hell was that? Yeah. No one was left in the classroom by then, so I looked at the piece of paper I held. It was like a handmade business card. It just read, Beat Nick Research Club President, Krimoto Shina, and had the location of the Beat Nick Research Club situated on the western wing. What? What's up with that girl? That night I saw a dream. In my dream, I was still living in that house. Of course you are. The old three-story mountain cottage by the riverbank. There I was looking at myself. It was like I spiritually departed from my body and was floating in space. I was gazing upon me, living my life. The me down there showed no signs of noticing me, and continued living normally. It seemed like I was watching a bit of the past. I was living carefree as I hadn't learned of the fear of the noises at night. Hey, come on, stop with this house. I wanted to tell him, but as a person just drifted... Wait, but as a person just drifting in a dream, there was nothing I could do. All I could do was observe. Eventually, I noticed that Yoshi was sitting next to me. Oh, the two of us were sitting together on the old sofa I picked up after moving. The two of us didn't speak to each other, instead just going on with our lives individually. I was yawning as I watched a TV, while she was just quietly reading a notebook. It was just a dream, so it was free to make up any situation it wanted, but I still thought it was odd. Hmm, interesting. Do you realize it was a dream? Well, I guess if you're looking at yourself, maybe you might realize it's a dream. That's, that's a fine thing. That's one time I had a dream, when I realized I was a dream, right? I, it was in my dream, I was like, this has to be a dream, right? So I said, well, pinch myself. So I pinch myself in my dream and realize I could feel no pain. And then I start pinching myself even harder and I'm like, wait a second, I can't feel anything. And then I came to the conclusion within my dream that I was in a dream. And then I was like, huh, so this is a dream and I could do whatever I want. That actually happened once. I don't think it ever happened again. Like, it's kind of hard. Like, you don't normally realize you're in a dream when you're dreaming. That's just one time I actually dream when I realized I was in a dream. Funny. However, I also accepted that if I were to live together with her, neither of us would really interfere with the other. Huh. Eventually, the me down there got bored of the TV and proceeded to stretch, wash his face and brush his teeth. I thought about studying a bit, but instead, I just immediately went to sleep. Uh, he's talking about the himself, the I in, the posh, in quotation marks, is him in the dream. As I observed myself as an outsider, I realized that I was a pretty boring person. I boasted that I would turn the fortunes of my family's lumber business. Your family runs your lumber business, huh? That was downtrodden and had departed Shizuoka. Shizuoka? Yeah. In opposition of my father and big sister. They ought to get into the seminar I wanted and wanted a court size. Yep. Plus, I hadn't even written a single letter to my mother, who I promised to send letters to after coming to Tokyo. Finally, I moved into a haunted house because of the low rent and went to a psychotic girl. I wanted to slap myself. As I sighed and glared at, I quickly curled up in my bedroom. Even though Yoshi was there, it seemed I could not see her as I turned off the light. Yoshi seemed to notice the light had gone off as she closed the book and stared off into space. Alright. I floated down to Yoshi thinking I turned the light on for her. Wow, nice guy. It's about time. I had a bad feeling from Yoshi's words. And then... In the darkness, with only moonlight illumination, I heard that sound. From somewhere, the sound of something being scraped. 
an ominous melody ringing across the border connecting this world and the other. As if something was trying to crawl out of a sealed dimension as I heard that sound, my body slowly froze. It was like watching those supernatural shows on TV where they set up a camera in rooms that ghosts are rumored to appear. Paranormal activity. This dream isn't bad. Wait, this dream. Oh, it, it is bad. This dream. Isn't it bad? I need to wake up as soon as possible. Because if I stay here like this, I would see the something that was engraving numbers into this house. I frantically tried to wake up. I waved my limbs around trying to touch something but I could not wake myself from the dream. It was like my body had been caught by some black hair seeping out of a different world. Feeling the despair of having been locked into a room with no exit, within the dream, only my panting echoed and suddenly I found myself next to Yoshi. Alright. On the old ladder sofa, Yoshi and I were embracing each other. Oh wow, damn. Huh. As if I were trying to stay in both of my palms with Yoshi's body temperature, I played with her body. Wow. That was my wish, and yet, it wasn't. I mean, of course I had some interest in girls as a simple 18 year old boy, but my last thing wasn't this twisted. Yeah, okay. Thanks for defending yourself. I was just the type to release my sexual lust by turning myself into an unseen existence. I was pretty sure I had that much reason in me anyways. Okay. However, Yoshi showed no signs of fear. In fact, she looked like she's enjoying it. If anything, she was in a state of ecstasy, yep. Her expression was dangerous. It felt... I felt my reason making sounds as it broke apart. What's that noise? I lit Yoshi's skin. Okay, great. I groped her breast, threw her clothes. Is this an 18 plus game? I didn't know it was an 18 plus game. Did I check? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not an 18 plus game. I lashed it over her soft body with the tips of my fingers. I pulled out her long skirt, showing her white thighs. Yoshi's eyes were barely open, her lips were slightly parted, and I could see her white teeth. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you right now. Stop! I screamed from within my body, but I couldn't restrain my abnormal extreme lusting. However, the moment I... Okay... Oh, wait. Hold on. I, w I wasn't able to read. However, the moment I placed a hand on her white wrist, I almost screamed. That, that text moved on on its own. My arms were not ones I'd become accustomed to seeing, but... Rather were long and thin, if anything like that of an aged man. Those sleeves were grey and worn. I was wearing an old suit. You are the guy now? I felt like I faintly smelled some cologne. I stretched out my trembling arms and, my, and felt my face, my nose, my lips. And what I felt was hideously not mine. It was definitely that of someone else. And I knew whose it was. Him. That man exiting, existing at the edge of my vision, and finally my face tilted against my will. My face... My face pointed toward the window ahead, toward the moonlight, and my eyes locked with the man covering Yoshi. That instant, I lost consciousness. Okay. Along with incredible trembling, I woke up. It was my new apartment with... The abnormally bright lighting from the lamp. To my side was a coffee table with the empty box of the convenience store meal I just eaten and an unfinished bottle of oolong tea. Oh, oolong. I prefer jasmine though. Yeah, jasmine my favorite. Oolong is second, I guess. Yeah. Near my pillow, textbooks and notebooks for university had been tossed about. There was a cheap curtain between me and the sash to the small veranda, and it swayed a bit from the night breeze coming through a gap in the sash. Let me guess what's going to happen. You're gonna keep having nightmares about the house, and it's gonna drive you crazy, so you decided, once and for all, I'm gonna solve the mystery, and that would drive you back to the house. Cause, we can't just move out of the house and nothing happens. I breathed deeply. My heart was still pounding. I came home from work, ate a bit, and then had following sleep. Fuck off with scaring me. I felt malice towards no one in particular and grabbed the bottle. 
I got down the third or so that was left of the oolong tea. I felt incredibly thirsty, and even and even the lukewarm oolong tea tasted delicious. Delicious. When I finished, I felt a bit calm. When I scratched my head, I exhaled shortly. Calm down, just a dream. It was just two weeks ago. It's not surprising to have some fear still in my heart. That's why I saw that dream. That's all. I mumbled to myself in an effort to persuade myself, but my heart didn't stop pounding. I could still feel Yoshi's soft body in my hands. You perv. Well, well, you did defend yourself already. Like, oh no, I was, I wouldn't do this, but my body just moved on its own. All right, I believe you. Then I realized that something was ringing in my head. It was like a phone from next door, like cell phone in my pocket was still ringing, a quiet but definite warning sound. What? What's bothering you? Don't tell me it's scratching. I looked around, new white wallpaper surrounded me and there was just a spacious vacant room that I had, that hadn't been able to fill with furniture. Nothing had changed between before and after I slept. However, the bell inside my head kept ringing. What is it? I stood up then and looked around the room again. There was nothing out of the ordinary. Is it the doorbell? The after effects of a scary dream were just bothering me, that's all. I was trying to think that when I noticed it. Next to the wall was a ladder leading to a small loft. You mean there wasn't a ladder before? The light. The lighting for the loft was different, so it was slightly dark there. Just then I felt something cold travel down my spine. Why did I pick a place with a loft? That dark area where it felt like someone might jump out at me from gave me bad thoughts. It felt like the warning inside me was directed straight at the loft. Yeah, why did you pick a place with a loft? I mustered the courage to look up and warning sound grew and the warning sound grew louder. Huh. I swallowed once and turned on the light to the loft next to the ladder. Don't jump scare me. Okay, we're gonna climb up cause curiosity. You're gonna jump scare me, are you? How can a visual novel jump scare me? Come on. I placed the foot on the ladder, climbing it one step at a time. And then I willed myself to look into the loft. Nothing. See? Alright, it's not. Of course there was no one in the loft. The only thing there was a cheap sleeping bag I bought instead of a blanket and a number of books that were scattered about. Haha. <laughs> but then suddenly behind you, it's not, it's not going to, right? It's not going to be nothing. I breathed with relief and was just about to climb back down when I noticed it. On the other side of the sleeping bag, at the furthest wall I saw something. I don't see anything. Two. I saw something. Wounds. Two lines. Two lines is two. Had been drawn violently on. Had been violently drawn. Oh wow. Alright, the countdown still continues even after you moved out. Great! That's why we have to solve the mystery and. to save ourselves. I screamed a silent scream as I tumbled from the ladder. I made a loud sound as my knee and shoulder struck the ground but I didn't care. Somehow I managed to grab my wallet and cell phone and I jumped out of the door. Not lines, those weren't lines, that was scratch marks. Two. The number two. I had even moved, but the countdown continued. I jumped into the city, the night city, and ran to a convenience store in search of light. As I ran, I tapped at my cell phone, accessing Ikaiga Bushi, and then I looked at the forum from end to end. I didn't care if it was Kawasu, or Hsu, or Yoishi anymore, or anyone. I desperately looked for someone I knew. And then I saw it, in the thread titled Mysterious Dimension Isen Jingu, a mere 30 minutes ago, Yoshi had posted. Ignoring the serious discussion on how to see Yata no, Ka no Kagami at the Koitai Jingu, I posted there. Hey Yoshi, help me. The cop maniacs who at once who had their debate interrupted laughed at my 
spontaneous post, but I ignored them. Yoshi, you're reading this, aren't you? Talk to me, he's still following me. But of course Yoshi never answered and just angered the Isen Jungu maniacs. Even after reaching the convenience store, I looked around Ikaigabushi while I was in the parking lot. I tried writing in places that Yoshi might find interesting to contact me immediately. But maybe I posted too often because the entire forum rose up in arms calling me a spam. If I got banned, I have trouble contacting her. So I started responding, no I'm not a spammer, I'm seriously in trouble. But people just coolly respond responded that that was spamming. Yeah, these people. Eventually others began calling me a wannabe and I got pissed off and shot at them. You scum and caught me next and the flames continued. It was like 100 versus 1 as the flames continued being spat. Why does I was feeling like the world was against me and I was about to slam my phone against the ground? Are you Nagi? Someone wrote that. When I looked at the name it said Krishna. Krishna, not Yoshi. Oh yeah, Nagi is your handle name. That was that name was like a miracle descending upon me and I almost crumbled to the ground. I tried to type a response but I fingers were trembling too much. As I struggled like that, Krishna pushed it again. And it said Come to the place written on the card I gave you this afternoon. Uh that's Krishna. Huh. But how would she know who I am? In real life. Like, the only person you ever told your real name and I was Yoshi. Right? You never met Krishna at the meeting, so how did Krishna met you and then why is it this all your fault, blah blah blah. Yeah. Huh. Oh well. Yeah, come to the place with the card I gave you this afternoon. It was past 2am. I left my bicycle behind so I plodded my way to the University on foot. Of course the front gates were closed and the security guard looked at me suspiciously. In an effort to escape from that look, I took a wide arc and then went along the fencing toward the line of Yelkova trees on the left. After you walk a bit there, here, no, after you walk a bit here, you get to the western wing, which housed the Beatnik Research Club room. Krimotoshina, Krishna. I was so careless. I noticed nothing. That the administrator of Ikaigabushi Krishna was a person who attended the same university. Well, you can't really expect. And for that baby face girl to be Krishna was unimaginable. But people said he. And then they said he attended the meeting, they saw him. Huh. I went straight to the furthest room and was shocked when I entered. There were still some students inside chatting with each other. I felt a bit exasperated as though this was some sort of never night castle, but I guess this was just the way it was for students and so I felt a bit embarrassed about myself still being afraid of ghosts. My feet, my feet felt heavy as I arrived at the Beatnik Research Club on the third floor and I saw light on the other side of the smoke glass. I knocked on the door and I heard a familiar voice so I said, It's Nagi, Yamado, Yamada Nagito. It's open. Excuse me. When I opened the door, I found myself facing an empty concrete wall, wall room of about 10 tatamis. There was a single steel cabinet against the wall. In the middle was a relatively large work table. And there were four seats placed around the table and three people seated. In the middle... Yoshi? Nope, Krishna. Because she was wearing all black, I was like... Um... Was she? But no. The red frame glasses were as odd as usual, but she was wearing what seemed to be a priestess outfit. That's a priestess outfit? I can't see from this angle, I guess. A priestess outfit stained in black. Alright, that's why. Priestess outfits aren't black. They're white and red. But, okay. Head on a Taka Takageta and sat on a seat. This suited her too well. I had no interest in such types, but. I could almost understand how people who like lollies and people who like cosplay felt. Which is scary. Really? Um, you... I mean, are you Krishna? I asked and the girl made a disdainful face and nodded. I warned you to leave that house immediately. Huh? Karasu told you nothing? Nothing at all. And then Krishna cutely clicked her tongue and said, Well, come in. 
I looked around and the room again and next to the small courtside administrator was a woman who seemed to be in their late twenties and did not seem like a student wearing simple white eastern clothing. And a bald middle aged man wearing monk attire who no matter what looked nothing at all like a student. Eh huh? Um I didn't know how to greet them, so I just stood bewildered at the entrance and Krishna made a motion with her small chin to sit there. I sat down in the chair that had been prepared for me. When the middle-aged monk stood behind me and grabbed my shoulders with his thick arms. Um, hey, what's going on? And then Krishna pushed her glasses up and asked, Why are you trying to see the other side on your own accord? And then she began lecturing me in a stern voice. Alright, but I think this is a good place to end it. Well, yeah. Alright, so we're getting questioned by Krishna now, and I'm not sure what is going on. The countdown still continues, and yeah. Alright, so leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.